Hey everyone, Board Game Brody here with Meeple Mountain. I have a preview copy of Ninja's Tournament by Tuniverse Games. This is a collection of three mini games that will test your ninja skills and you will compete with your family and friends by battling monsters and scoring points and the player with the most points at the end of it will emerge to be the ninja champion. So these dexterity-like games are set up using similar pieces but in different ways and players should practice them before jumping into a tournament. This might be experimenting with different flicking methods or adjusting the strength of your flick or, you know, forming new angles with your flicks. <laughs> with time, you will find the sweet spot for each of these games. And it might take a while for you to do this, but uh, this is what my five-year-old told me the first day of playing this game. You're bad at it. At what? At that. You can do better? Yeah. In a standard tournament, players each play a round of a selected game, which consists of three consecutive turns, and each turn includes three consecutive shots. So your turn doesn't end until you have done, done the three shots, because a previous shot can alter other shots taken after the first one or the second one. After three shots, your turn is over, and you will then claim your points and reset the game board for the next player. After a game is finished or after three turns each, the next chosen game is then set up. And the tournament ends after three games have been done all completely at the end. The players with the most points then with the combined games wins the tournament. Now also, if players want to customize their tournament with more rounds or a preferred game, that is all right as well. You know, do what you want. To track points, players have a player card with a clip that will keep track of their points. Each game includes a different criteria on how you score points, but this provides a way for you to track your points so you don't forget from game to game. So real quick, let's go over how you put this game together. You'll take the walls and you will attach them as you see here. The tallest tree is in the back. Be careful when reassembling these as you will want to pull upwards while holding down on the box with your other fingers. You know, these prongs are the most uh, concerned because if they are gone, then the walls won't be attached anymore. Then each game provides a different background, which is dropped in, and the wall hooks are then connected, as you can see here. When changing games, simply remove the wall hooks, remove the background, and place the new one in, and then put the wall hooks back in. The bridge is assembled in one way, but then is used in different ways depending on what game that you are playing. In any game, the bridge walls are considered out, so if a shot hits or bounces off a bridge wall, it is considered a miss. Also, if a shot doesn't leave the bridge, it's also a miss. So what are these three games? Well, let's go over them. Let's start with Arrow. There are three targets set up in the lava. Players will load arrows into the bow, making sure that the arrow head lines up evenly with the front prongs. The bow is then positioned anywhere along the edge of the bridge, making sure that only the arrow sticks out. A finger is placed on the top of the base of the bow to hold it onto the bridge, and then the other hand is used to shoot the arrow by flicking it vertically. Do not tilt your flicking hand to the side as it will cause the arrow to be shot in a different angle than you have expected it to. Three shots are then taken to knock down the targets and if a target lands and is leaning up uh, like at an angle against the background or the wall, then it counts as being knocked over. Arrows can ricochet to hit multiple targets and if an arrow fails to completely leave the bow, then you can reset it and shoot it again. You will score three points when knocking over a target, two points if the target is standing up but touching the outside of its ring, and one point if the target is standing yet moved and it is touching somewhere inside of its ring. Let's see this game in action. This game's focus is on accuracy. Next game is the bola. Three targets are lined up using a platform and they're placed face down and then the platform is flipped over, placed on the board with the platform staying on the board. The bolas are then placed between the two plugs 
and then you will use a finger to flick the bola to land on one of the targets and you will score three points when the bola ensnares a target for the first time two points when the bola ensnares a target for a second time and the third time is one point if the bola lands or leans on the bola platform as well so if you ensnare all three targets with a bola on each that's three points each so nine points total let's see this one in action now This game focuses on the velocity that you place on the bola. The last one is the, the orb. An orb is placed on each of the three holes on the bridge, and each one is shot by flicking one at a time, and you're trying to get the orb to land in one of the mouths. If the orb falls off of the orb platform or touches the bridge wall, then it counts as a miss. Players score three points when an orb lands into a small mouth, two points when an orb is first to land in a large mouth, and one point if an orb is the second to land into a large mouth, and one point if an orb stops on the platform itself without ending in any of the mouths. To maximize points, it's recommended to try to get the first one in the front small mouth so that you can ricochet others off of it to land in the other small mouths to the sides. And now let's see this one in action. This game is maybe the easiest to master, but is a combination of accuracy and velocity. After playing each game, the points are then tallied up, and whoever has the most points total wins the game. And, well, that's Tiny Ninja's Tournament. This is a great game facing off with mini games that require skill as they take time to sharpen your skills to become, you know, an expert at doing them. The game is a great warm up at game night or to bust out when you're waiting for another player to arrive. It's a great game to play over a long period of time and you can even, you know, keep track of who wins over time with a tally board or something like that. Face off with your game group every time you meet or with your partner each night that you play. If your kids think they are better than you, like mine do, then have them prove it. This is just a fun game to have to bust out when there is some free time because the game plays pretty quickly. It's competitive, it's based off of your skills, and you will get better and better as you play it as well. The components in the prototype are made very nicely. I can see the game lasting for a very long time. I didn't even see problems with... This game is perfect for those who like to perfect their strategy and play it over and over again to get better and better. Players can eventually find the sweet spots on all of these games and, you know, muscle memory will kick in and that will benefit that player. But again, I see it as an opening game for game night or for a long-standing battle. Anyways, the game is straightforward with no surprises, exactly what you saw in this video. Each game comes with a, a card to make the switch easy and it'll show the components needed and the way that you will place the bridge to play the game. It also shows a quick reference on how to score points and after playing a couple times, these cards are all you will need and they will you know, be used randomly to choose which game you, you want to play as well. They, they can have many uses. So practice flicking to fight these monsters with your family and friends in Tiny Ninja's Tournament by Tooniverse Games. Again, this is Board Game Brody and I hope you enjoyed this video. Stick around and check out some other board game reviews to see what you might want to get to the table.